Now, I know that this show came out over a year ago and that it's far from the first thing on most people's minds at this point, but looking back on it, I'm frankly still a bit baffled by some of the decisions that were made regarding the Disney Plus show, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Especially because they seem to be going out of their way to fix every minor continuity issue George Lucas may have had between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. But also don't consider the hundreds of other, much more glaring continuity issues they were creating at the same time. Now obviously there will be spoilers for the entirety of this series ahead as well as possibly for a few things in the larger story of Star Wars as well. So in case you don't want anything ruined, you probably shouldn't proceed with this video. This will be the only spoiler warning I'll be giving out. Okay, so to cut right to the chase, when I first watched it, I believed the Obi-Wan series to be pretty good, but not without its problems. Over time, however, I've come to find more and more glaring issues with the show, most of which boils down to what I noted a minute ago, that it tries to fix every little inconsistency created by George Lucas, but has no problem creating a hundred other inconsistencies in the name of telling its story. And only a few examples of this would be having Obi-Wan and Leia forging a friendship when it's obvious George Lucas never intended them to have met. Now I know it can be construed to argue that they could have known each other, but it's pretty glaring what Lucas had in mind. Obi-Wan and Darth Vader were also never supposed to meet again after their duel in Revenge of the Sith. Now again, if you twist and turn things enough, you can argue that them meeting again could have happened, but once again, one only needs to watch Revenge of the Sith to know that George Lucas doesn't intend on them crossing paths again until A New Hope. And on that topic, Obi-Wan just leaving him alive of his own free will is a pretty bad one as well. Now don't get me wrong, I do like the idea of him defeating his enemy by showing him mercy he doesn't want, but if you ask me, that was done much better and made a lot more sense in Revenge of the Sith, especially when you think about it. Because in that movie, you can see how emotionally drained Obi-Wan is. It makes a lot more sense that he would just leave him there to slowly burn to death. Especially because anybody would say it was pretty certain he was going to die. Here he has him dead to rights, and has just been assured that his friend is truly gone. So instead of finishing him off and sparing the galaxy his wrath, he just walks away in disgust. Now, not only does that not make any sense, but it's completely out of character for Obi-Wan to do something like that. And the thing is... This last one is particularly glaring because there were so many ways to keep the scene exactly as it is without Obi-Wan intentionally leaving him alive. For example, just as he's about to kill him, the Grand Inquisitor shows up with an army of stormtroopers, forcing him into retreat before he can finish him off. Or Vader uses every last ounce of strength in him to force push Obi-Wan away and flee which could even have led to an interesting introspective of himself later on, where he hates Obi-Wan and himself even more because he ran away from the fight rather than die trying to finish it. Or, and this is a personal favorite of mine, Obi-Wan is about to kill Vader when he suddenly senses that Luke is in danger and becomes so horrified that he forgets everything and immediately takes off to try and save him. Now, not only do I believe this one to be much more in character, but it goes a long way in showing just how much faith and care he puts into Luke. Heck, if they had done it this way, they could have even kept all the dialogue exactly the same. However, that still doesn't change what we ultimately see in the final product 
which puts a lot of strain on the suspension of disbelief when it was ironically trying to do the exact opposite. And I believe that mainly comes down to the whole premise itself. I mean, I'm sorry, but this should have been a much more low-key show about Obi-Wan in the desert trying to come to terms with everything that had happened and trying to finally get in contact with Qui-Gon. Though, to be fair, the part where he does show up is one of the only things they got even half right. Personally, I'd say the Emperor scene is another, but I have an extremely favorable bias towards him, so that's only my personal opinion. But anyway, the point is that while it may have made for a much slower, and possibly boring, let's face it, story, it's the one that would have fit in a lot more logically with George Lucas's pre-established story. Besides, it could have been interesting seeing a smaller story of Obi-Wan trying to forgive himself and the Jedi Order for what had happened. And yes, they do explore this to a degree in the series, and I will admit, Obi-Wan finding out that Anakin is alive and coming to forgive himself through confronting him again wasn't actually the worst idea. But the problem is that they don't focus enough on it for that to work properly. If they had removed the whole Leia and Reva subplots and focused much more on that directly, then it might have had the same punch as him sitting in his hut battling his inner demons. But as is, it's not given the attention it needs or deserves, to the point that I'd argue they were better off not doing it at all. As I said before, I believe what would have made for the better, more logical series would have been for him to already know, either from the news, for lack of a better way of putting it, or through the Force, for a long time already that Vader was alive, and mainly be introspective, exploring how Obi-Wan comes to terms with it all. That's what I believe would have fit in with Lucas' story better. And that right there reveals why this series was never going to work from the start. It doesn't respect George Lucas. And if you'll notice, the two biggest issues this TV show has, the inconsistencies and somewhat illogical story, are exactly the same problems the sequel trilogy had, which also didn't respect George Lucas. And it's rather evident right in the show itself how they make sure to absolutely correct every little consistency that Lucas created while being totally oblivious to all the inconsistencies they are creating. Because it's almost like their thinking is that Lucas is how not to do Star Wars and that what they do, no matter what it is, will automatically be better by comparison. But as the sequels proved, that couldn't be further from the truth. George Lucas is Star Wars, and to go against him is to go against Star Wars itself. Now, please do note that I'm not trying to imply that there was any active malicious intent on the part of the creators of this show to disrespect Lucas. I'm not saying anything like that. All I'm saying is that they clearly didn't stop and ask themselves if this story actually fit into Lucas's canon or make much of an attempt to ensure that it did. Now, contrast this with, say, The Book of Boba Fett. For all the show's bizarre flaws and decisions, it never feels like the writers are saying they can do Star Wars better than Lucas. It feels like they're going out of their way to try and fit this story into Lucas's world. I'm not saying they necessarily succeeded in that, but at least it feels like an attempt was made to honor his vision. In Obi-Wan, it feels like they're trying to correct it, while accidentally causing more problems than it solves. Because really, when you compare the inconsistencies between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope to the ones this show makes, it's rather apparent that Lucas's mistakes are very minor. I mean, did we really need to see a reason why Obi-Wan calls Vader Darth in A New Hope? 
I always just assumed it came from a refusal to call him Vader to his face, considering he only refers to him as Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. Or that scene where Obi-Wan lectures him on how he'll never be the master until he learns certain things. But there was already two perfectly good reasons why Vader makes that claim in A New Hope. That being that he was never granted the rank of Jedi Master, while by this point he is clearly a Sith Master, and also considering the little fact that Obi-Wan beat him, cut off his limbs, and had him burnt to a crisp, one could easily assume why Vader would concede that he was still the learner. Again, we didn't need these on-the-nose explanations for the one interaction that might sound a little confusing at first glance. And that's another thing. I don't understand what this obsession is with trying to recontextualize Vader as a man who does horrible, evil things and fell to the dark side of his own accord. George Lucas outright said he envisioned Vader as a slave, an errand boy compared to the Emperor, and even shows in the prequels that it's the Emperor's thorough manipulations of him that gets him to fall to the dark side. Now listen, I'm not saying that Vader was never meant to be a monster, or that his fall to the dark side wasn't partially his own fault. I'm just saying that I can't picture Vader boasting that he destroyed Anakin Skywalker, especially as George Lucas envisioned him. I mean, in Revenge of the Sith, he never makes that claim, and in Return of the Jedi, he gets extremely defensive when he hears his name spoken. And you'd think that if he really believed that, he would be telling Luke what he tells Obi-Wan in the show. But instead, when Luke makes that same claim, Vader appears shaken to his very core, which that scene in Obi-Wan totally contradicts. Basically, my point here is, George Lucas's Darth Vader was a monster who did horrible things, yes, but he was a thoroughly miserable person. He was a man who knows he completely screwed up his life and simply accepts slavery to the Emperor, believing both that he deserves it and that he's the only person left that genuinely cares about him. To put it simply, Vader's extremely cool demeanor was, in quite a few ways very literally, a shield to hide the completely broken, almost suicidally depressed man hidden underneath but instead they just build on his image as an evil dark lord without exploring any of those hidden layers to him. To put it simply, a casual fan might assume that Vader would boast that he destroyed Anakin, but anybody who knows how George Lucas truly envisioned him might suspect otherwise. And I also feel that the whole thing of Obi-Wan coming to this realization didn't need to happen. Alec Guinness's performance in Return of the Jedi, where he explains everything to Luke, there's so much complexity there and nuance, especially considering he didn't have the prequels to work off of, that I feel works a million times more effectively. You don't need to know how this man came to the conclusions he did. Just that it left a lasting effect on him, that he was really screwed up by this stuff. You don't need to see how he came to those conclusions. It's a lot better if you're left to assume how he did. But to get back on topic, the point is that this TV series was a rather flawed one from conception simply due to the fact that they decided to tell their own story and try to cover up any holes Lucas had between movies instead of trying to tell a story that would actually fit his vision. And the result is a series that creates more holes than it covers up and calls into question the decisions of a lot of different characters. In a nutshell, 
What I'm saying is that sometimes it's better to just respect somebody's work within the confines of what they've created rather than try and fix what they did while doing whatever you want. Because that's the crucial difference between this show and, say, the Clone Wars TV series. Because both were arguably trying to fix something Lucas had done. The difference, however, is that the Clone Wars was arguably fixing something that needed some fixing, while at the same time still completely respecting that story and his vision regardless. In Obi-Wan, the writers, for whatever reason, felt that they could do it better than Lucas. And the result was a series that created a lot more plot holes and inconsistencies than George Lucas had ever created with the prequels. Okay, I think that's everything I had to say on that. So now I'd like to hear what you guys think. Do you believe that the Obi-Wan Kenobi show should have been closer to George Lucas's vision of Star Wars? Or do you believe it was perfect just the way it is? Please let me know in the comments. And let me just once again reiterate, I have nothing against the people who created this show and am not trying to imply that they hate George Lucas or that they don't understand Star Wars. I don't believe that they had any malicious intent or that they deliberately did anything against him. And as usual, you don't have to agree with me on this or anything I said either. You can absolutely love everything about this series if you want to. Just don't go hating on people if you didn't. And thank you all for watching. It is all very greatly appreciated. And I hope to see you all next time.